Buffalo Riders, what is cracking? Today it is time for another dope recording of the flow. All right, guys, you know how this works. What we're going to do is in a minute, I'm going to bring on my guests and then we're going to go walk him through this process of setting up a podcast for his coaching business. In a way, this is for anyone out there who has a business, who has been thinking about whether they start a podcast and like what does making a podcast look like for business where you're trying literally to be, you know, I hate this word, top of funnel, but we're going to use the word because that's what people understand. Let's switch it to ecosystem in our brains, though. Fundos sound so violent and like, you know, spit people in the top and shoot them out the bottom. I don't know. I don't like words like that. Anyway, so we're going to talk about like how to bring customers in and it's funny because there'll be some conversation and you understand why I thought this was a really good one. A lot of you guys are struggling with how do I do this as a business without sounding too salesy? All right, we're going to get into that. And so I found the perfect person because he hit me up and says, hey, man, I'm looking you know, at getting into starting a podcast for my business. And I was like, huh? well, that's cool because I had that on my list of ideas of episodes to run down. So very, very specific, very oriented for those of you guys who are looking to start a podcast as a means of basically connecting with your customers, inviting more customers in, things like that. One last thing I wanted to remind you of, if you haven't done so already, please jump on over to The Flow. It's basically flow.ecamm.com. That's flow.ecamm.com. And jump on to the iTunes guy and leave us a review if you are enjoying this or share it with a friend. If you know somebody that's like, I've been thinking about starting a podcast. I don't know what to do. Right. Send them to us because we like to do this. We like to like put people in the blocks and then put them like, you ready? Get that? Go like the Olympics. All right. So let's dive in. Without further ado, let me bring in a buddy of mine. He was one of the original members of my LGL group. Uh, has been a longtime ECAM fam and just quite incredible guy. As a matter of fact, you know, every say even a coach needs a coach. Well, as a coach, I need a coach. And so when I need a coach, guess who I call? I call Mr. Noble Bowman. What's up, Mr. Noble Bowman? Dun, 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 dun. What's up, Doc Rock? Hey, man, good to see you. Out there hanging out in Fort Lost in the Woods, Missouri. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> That's right. A little bit of nowhere. I'm hanging out in a cool coffee shop called Classic Rock Coffee, and it's it's a rock and roll coffee shop. Oh, hey, everybody can use a little rock and roll and coffee, especially this time of day. <laughs> All right, cool. So what we're going to do first is ex explain to me, like, the type of customers that you deal with in your coaching business. Sure. So I coach small business owners typically, um, and typically they're guys that started out a business because they were a great technician and they're really good at what they do, but they didn't necessarily have the business skills behind them to make it work. And so I come in alongside them and help them create strategic plans, create clarity around their mission, vision, values, um, help them to address any challenges that they're going and get them moving along. So my typical client has been in business usually uh, two to three years to start. They probably got three or four employees to begin with. And they're just now realizing that, hey, I need a little help to figure this out. There you go. I like that. Now, I, I think it's very important that I think so many people are still sort of wrapping their head around like why you know does anybody ever need a coach or whatever like that and i think this is one of the cool things that you're going to be able to talk about in the podcast because what i explain to people is you know what steph curry did today he practiced and he did what what the coach told yep. him to do you know what steph curry is probably <laughs> the greatest shooter of our lifetime uh for now anyway because yeah. i never made it to the nba so they didn't see me no actually i'm horrible at basketball so, like, you know, Tiger Woods is out there, you know, hitting balls. You know, Lee Haney was his coach for a little bit. Like, even the best, like the people that we see the best, they have a coach. Uh, whether you guys know it or not, the entire race, uh, Max Verstappen has somebody yelling in his ear telling him what to do. And yep. he's – he's. Yep. Um, making me mad because he keeps beating Lewis and Lewis is my G. <laughs> so um, uh, we all love, we all love Steve Jobs, right? Because he he uh, he brought us this amazing tool of uh, Apple and Mac. Steve Jobs and Bill Gates shared a business coach. Really? His name was Bill Johnson. Yeah, they shared. Actually, Bill Johnson also coached the guys over at Google a little bit. So you think about Steve Jobs needing a business coach. He had one. And it's pretty interesting. So I've actually kind of. Tried to follow Bill Johnson a little bit. 
Thank you. You know what? That's funny. I didn't, I mean, I worked for Steve for 10 years. I didn't know that. Okay. So yeah. what, what do you think is your ideal customer, right? You know, we always talk about finding that customer avatar. What do you think is your ideal customer? And the reason why I ask that is that's going to help us decide for you how to set your podcast up. Right. So my ideal customer um, is going to, like I said a little bit ago, he's going to probably been in business three to five years. Um, he probably has at least three employees. It's changing now. I've kind of moved up a little bit, but he probably has 750000 to a million dollars in revenue. And not that they have to have that, but that's kind of the ideal customer. I've got clients that are down three hundred fifty, four hundred thousand 400000 in revenue. Um, and then I got a client that's a $400 million revenue company. But that's the ideal is those are the people that have launched a business. Um, they were amazing computer programmers. So they decided to launch a computer programming business and they realized that Hey, I need some help with this. There's a really great book. I'll just throw this out. If you've never read it called E-Myth, um, the whole idea behind E-Myth is there are technicians and there are entrepreneurs. And there's a whole lot of people that launch businesses as technicians that never step into the entrepreneurial stage. And that's the reason we have, you know, 50 to 75 percent of businesses closed down within five years is because they never stepped out of that technician stage into the entrepreneurial stage. And that's what I help them do. Oh, that makes so much sense because I totally, fully understand that. And I love the E-Myth. It is one of those books that you Prob I like go to maybe every year or so, every two years at a maximum. Mm -hmm. Like I've probably been through that book. I want to say at least eight to ten times, maybe. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's yeah. A, yeah, it's one that was actually curriculum when I was in school because I was in I was one of the yeah. first e business majors to graduate from the University of Hawaii. That was one if of you haven't books. done it yet, check out E Myth Revisited. Um, yes, it's that's the most current one. To it. Yeah, love that book. It's good stuff. Okay. So guys, everyone who's listening to this at home or watching us live in the taping, one of the things that we have available to you is we have something known as a podcast checklist. This is the flow checklist. For those at home, you are going to be able to get this in the show notes after this show is posted. Now, you actually have some of the beginnings of the checklist covered, right? We talk about creating a niche and picking a genre. And then we get to mm -hmm. probably what most people's most difficult section is, is naming the podcast. Have you already thought of a name for your podcast? Yes. Okay. What is it? The Bizology Guy. Oh, okay. I feel you. I like that. I like that. Um, I like that because yeah. uh, I, lo I love mixology. Um, but it's funny because I yeah. really love mixology. <laughs> I love the science behind it, learning what the guys do, tasting these incredible things. And as soon as after I taste it, I go, yeah, can I just get bourbon meat or bourbon on the rocks? Because, <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I, I like the concept of mixology. I like my whiskey tasting like whiskey. <laughs> anyway, there you go. no avocados in my whiskey. All right. So the next thing, this is really good people. A lot goes into your name. You can change it, but I would say spend some time in figuring out your name. And yes, it's helpful if the socials and stuff are available, but you know, people are smart nowadays. You don't have to have literally the exact same thing all the way across the board. It's harder and harder to get that. So, you know, don't worry about that. Now, we're going to get that. We talk about getting your podcast cover art and setting up your social profiles. Now, the most important step next for you, Noble, is going to be creating what is known as that trailer episode. Even if you don't plan on, say, launching until January, I would go and create that trailer episode now. This is one of the most key steps that a lot of people forget, and I'll explain to you why. When you create a trailer episode, you're giving – the Apple, the Spotify, the Google, the Stitcher, you know, wherever the podcast getting is got, you're giving them an opportunity to basically see the podcast. It will already land past the verifications and all that you need. It's not like, you know, Twitter blue. It's basically they're checking an RSS feed to make sure it's a legit RSS feed. And then once all of that done, it will upload. So you'll be able to see it, already start promoting it, sending it out to your email list. Um, you're going to basically get that started so we did our preview episode i believe it was roughly two weeks before we started it might have been a week i forget it seems like so long ago but we only started in august which is kind of fun so let me ask you that is so this this preview episode or trailer episode is it 
different than all the other podcasts? Am I getting on here and saying, hey, here's what to expect? Or is it just a real episode? No, no, no. It can be completely a, hey, I'm Noble Bowman. You know, you can find me at such and such and such. I am a business coach. This is the type of things I'm into. And this is the type of listeners I'm looking for. If this fits you or if you know someone similar to this description, please uh, send them the link, pass it on. I can't wait to share with you guys. And, you know, if you're going to have guests on, tell them you're going to have guests on. You can just kind of explain what the show is going to be about. Most cases, these trailer episodes are sub five minutes. Okay. Have you already picked a platform to put it on? No. All right, cool. This is easy. Uh, Captivate. Let me just save you the drama. (laughs) (laughs) Captivate FM is quite amazing. Uh, We have links on the flow page to to get to Captivate. This is what we use. The one caveat I will give you, no, you don't have to listen to me. You can listen to whatever. But the thing I love about Captivate is they are built with a growth mindset. They have fantastic tools designed to help you grow. Like their whole back end has a section specifically about growing your podcast. Now, the big move right now is creating video oriented podcasts, right? So whether you're going to show the video or not, because people believe, you know, bald guys with beard and glasses, they think we're smarter than everyone else. So I'm going to just say, go ahead and do the YouTube (laughs) part two. Um, But whether anyone's going to be there, like we have a live audience right now, you have, you know, a bunch of people watching. It is probably in your best interest to run it live and basically record it live. A couple of things that's going to do. It's going to give you sort of instant marketing because of the people that bump into you while you're live because of the way YouTube shows things. Number two, it's going to make your editing process easier. Instead of just sending audio files to Luis, Luis can see what we're doing. Luis can see my hands doing the Puerto Rican thing. So as a Puerto Rican himself, he knows that as soon as my hands stop, I'm done talking. He can check with yours, right? So as he's editing, it's easier for him to edit because he has visual cues, right? If you make a weird face, if I say something stupid, like the chief sucks and Raiders are the best, he'll know that... <laughs> I don't know how we're even friends. I mean, come on, you're in the wrong team, bro. Uh, the He can see those things, and so it makes it simpler for you to edit. So especially for someone who's not very skilled at podcast editing, having that video by recording it in Ecamm, it will make your job a lot easier, even if you're going to throw the video away. On that note, I right. will tell you, don't throw the video away because YouTube mm-hmm. is about to really, really push this podcast thing. And so now is the time and you kind of want to have a video podcast. It doesn't have to be hyper cute. Yep. It could be super simple as a basic ecam drop with your face and your awesome PDFs. You can just pull them up right on the side and you can just remind the people on mm-hmm. the audio that they should be also checking out the video because the PDFs are going to be sort of right there. You know what I mean? So that's that's the one thing. But Captivate does not support video podcasts. So you will have two basic things. You'll have one live on YouTube that you upload once you edit it. You don't have to. You could just leave the live recordings raw. And then the edited audio is in the Apple podcast or Castro or Overcast or whatever. And you can just remind people the live shows are the live shows. But if you want to edit them so that you can send them out in your newsletter or email, then go ahead and edit them and send them that way too. You'll just re-upload it to YouTube. So we keep both. We keep this raw version that everyone's visualizing right now. And then we also post the edited version a week later. So they got two things. So you just mentioned it. Let me ask you this. I am a public speaker. I'm a terrible writer, but I'm a public speaker. So I speak with my hands. But anytime I've done any type of video, I've tried to keep my hands down. Is that just that. a preference thing or I mean, because I'm a I mean, I'm a public speaker. <laughs> yeah, I, right. I use my hands because <laughs> if I put my hands in my lap and just talk, it messes up my flow. And don't tell Alec I say this. I look like my boy Alec. <laughs> I like to tease him about that. And I know like if you if you watch ENN, Anna has this thing where she uh, was looking so hard for a microphone because she wouldn't hit it. I'm pretty cognizant about not hitting it. But even if I do hit it, not that big a deal. Right. But yeah, I prefer to use my hands because it. I don't want to mess with my energy. And technically, you're supposed to give about 10% more energy than normal because the camera right. is going to thief part of it, right? So I like to keep that. Right. I like to keep the hands in. Yeah. And then if your hands are in front of you, you're not hitting the table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've 
been known to do that before. Yeah, don't hit the table, especially when your mic is on the table. This has my mic in the, on the air, table. so I can hit the table a little bit. But also, my table is a three hundred pound like uh, monkey pod slab, so it doesn't make a lot of noise. Most of your IKEA stuff will make noise. I think people are used right. to the table tap now, though, because so many podcasters do it because it's an old habit, you know. So I think yeah. the the pickiness of what used to be a radio broadcast isn't as important in the podcast. Mm -hmm. And as long as it's not hyper annoying, your audience might get used to it or they'll bug you about it. And that'll be your, your thing. That'll be your thing. Like the audience always tells me right. if I do something stupid, right. Or like we tease Tom about his jokes, <laughs> like he has the dad jokes. <laughs> and then, so that becomes part of the deal. Right. So it can be right. part of your brand of trying your hardest not to hit the table. Now we have the audio side covered and, you know, just the main thing about picking your platform is there's a bunch on the list. You'll see that we have things like uh, Captivate, uh, Buzzsprout. Uh, I don't know what I wrote them all down. I had tons of them. <laughs> there's more. Uh, Podbean is one that I use for a long, long time. There's so many of them out there. And even Anchor, a lot of people love Anchor. I'm not a fan, but Anchor is good in a sense, though, because Anchor will cover the video and the audio side. But the video will only reside in Spotify unless you okay. also upload it to YouTube. So there's that. So okay. we got that part covered. Now, the other thing that I would tell you to do just to save yourself a lot of time as you create this, you're going to want to create something like a show template. And what I mean by a show template, and I actually have an example in the freebies list. I have a kind of a rundown sheet that I use. I call it the podcasting workflow. This one is very much sort of about us, but you can adjust it to match what you want. So this next link is the podcasting workflow. And again, I'll put these in the show notes. So this basically just runs down how we do it. We're going to record it. After we record it, we finish editing. The edit comes back to us when Luis is done. Uh, we run that through the script. The script gives us a transcript because I think it's really good to put the transcript on your platform. Captivate makes that really okay. easy. As a matter of fact, Descript, you can send straight to Captivate from Descript, right? So you don't have to do anything. Okay. And then once we have it in there, I like to go into the episode as it sits in draft on Captivate, make a couple little minor tweaks, and then go ahead and publish that out. Now, yours might be after I finish publishing it out, what we do is Katie makes a blog post and she puts it, but yours might be, I'm going to make sure I send this out on the newsletter or send this out to my mailing list. I'm going to generate these five or six posts in relation to that, right? So you might go down like that. So there is a, a flow. <laughs> I, I hate saying it because it sounds funny coming out of kind of out of my face, but there is a direct flow. One more last link I'm going to show you. This is just something that I whipped up in pages. This last one is our episode flow planner. This basically gives me a checklist of what I'm putting in for my recording, what I'm needing for my edits, what I need for my publishing. If I have any sponsor or affiliates that I need to read out and I'll even put in what my intro topics are you know, topic one, two, three, I normally cover three topics in an episode and then hit the outro. And if there's any special notes, we make this all available to everyone. So again, these will be in the show notes for those of you guys listening at home. But those are some of the things to think about trying to have like a cohesive show. And I'm sure this is the type of thing yeah. that you already set up for your clients when you're dealing with them, right? Is giving them a, a plan and something to look forward yep. to. So this is what you would do in your show flow. Now, so I have a question. Is this a situation where you might be bringing on guests? Yeah, so I've I've kind of bounced back and forth. Um, does it have to be either or, or is, can it be both and? I do both and. And here's the reason why. Okay, so like I have a podcasting partner. And I love having a podcasting partner because it makes it very easy to bounce stuff off of. When your right. podcasting partner decides to buy a house <laughs> and it has to move, then you got to be able to do the show by yourself, which I'm fully capable of. I know some people may or may not be able to do that. Like I've done this forever, so I'm fully capable of that. So I like the fact that I can do a show where it's just me. I can do a show where mm -hmm. it's me and my partner 
Or like in the case of Jared, yourself, or last week, you know, I brought in four or five partners because <laughs> they 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 come right. as a package, like they're like a six pack. So I'm, I'm able to bring in a whole posse. So I like it. Plus, this is just me. I think the mix up yep. makes people like wanting like, oh, it's going to pop off this week. Right. It's kind of right, interesting. Right. So, yeah, I think you'll be fine for me as a person listening to this. Not only would I want to hear from you, but I would also want to hear from some of the businesses who are at the just got their luggage on the top yeah. shelf for the struggle bus. <laughs> and, then, right. and then kind right. of see you work with them through a process because then you can see, okay, now right. I get it. Like I'm catching a vibe, right? So any of your businesses that would be yeah. down, right? Like say you're, um, you're a pressure washing guy, you know, you can talk yeah. through a process with him or other shows, right. you know, you'll be able to have a follow-up episode. This is what's dope about that. Whether you know it or not now, because we're doing this mm. and we're giving our people a chance to write notes for their business podcast, we're going to have to have a follow-up right. episode after you launch and see how it's going. And then see how it's going. Yeah. Like, like, like physical therapy, right? Okay. Now you got that bend to 90 degrees. Let me hit you on. I need you to do squats, you know, or whatever the case may right. be. Right. So very cool. Yeah. So we have everything down. We got your basically your whole podcast ready to launch. Do you have a space that you'll be able to use for, say, growing a community around your podcast? What do you mean by space? I hate this word. Uh, Facebook group, uh, Discord server. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Discord server, yeah, you know, yeah. it's kind of the move. Uh, don't tell right. don't tell Keely I said that, but Discord server is kind of the move is one of the best right now. There's Circle, there's other places, but you're going to want to make sure you have a place for your community to, to hang out and chill and talk to each other right. and feel like they're part of something like that. That is, right. to me is the most missed opportunity for most podcasts is not understanding that that community right the flow riders like yo they got a name now <laughs> like they're gonna have the mm -hmm. jackets like uh the thunderbirds you know they're gonna have the thunderbird jackets there you go yep. <laughs> and, uh, what's, what the heck movie was that um greece there you go i was really trying to get it <laughs> trying to get it to come out of my head <laughs> i've never used discord much so you think that's a good thing to check in what about volley is that he is that oh volley is fantastic for this well, hey, guys, this is what's known as a segue in the podcasting business. Did you know that we have a volley for the flow? We use the volley as a way to let people who listen to the flow ask us questions or give us feedback or just come and say, sup, right? So you can go over sup. to ecam.tv slash volley. Yeah, so we have a volley that people can come in and ask questions and do things like that, and it's fantastic. I've actually noticed uh, Bradley teaches one of our friends. He's doing a full coaching community hey inside of his volley. And then my buddy Tim Schmoyer, he said by moving his coaching program into the main session being in volley, it gave him an opportunity to basically 10x the amount of people he had in a cohort at a time because of the asynchronous vibe of Volley. So, yeah, Volley is actually pretty dope for this. You introduced me to Volley on our conversation the other day when we were talking about doing this this podcast. Um, I have moved. I created a Volley for all my coaching clients, and I'm just now getting them all on board, but they're all excited about it. Um, yeah, it's so good. I think it's really good. Um, I think it's going to be a cool opportunity. Discord to me is still granddaddy. Um, I think it's the best. Well, actually, okay. he's not old enough to be granddaddy. Um, it's, you know, it's that smooth guy at the club. Because <laughs> uh, it just, it has all of the right parts, right. all of the right moves. It's really, really nice. The one thing that's really dope about Volley is it's quick is and it's low lift, right? You don't have to, you know, grab, right. you know, 50s, 250s on each side and press that joint. It's a lot easier lift. And it is something that most people know how to use because they've used the walkie talkie before. <laughs> so in a way mm -hmm. it's similar to that, but you don't have to listen to it immediately. It's like a voicemail tag back when we first got mobile phones. So yeah, Bali is pretty cool for this. All right. So now that we have your thing together, this is going to be the next part. We're going to record that first episode. Lucky for you, you already got all of the cool stuff. You got the microphone, you got your computer set up, you know, you have basically the gear part settled. So I, I need to get a new camera. Oh, you do? Oh, I, well, I do need to. So I'm, I've still got the old Canon M50 that I know you guys soured on after I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. If it works, it works. If you're looking for a new <laughs> camera right now, you know, 
I am finding my favorite camera right now, and everyone's going to laugh because I have my glorious Sony over here in the drawer. Uh, my favorite camera right now is this iPhone 14 Pro Max. Mm-hmm. I shoot so much with it. And in a situation like where you are today, hanging out in the coffee shop, there's actually a little clip. You can stick it right on your MacBook and then use this as your MacBook camera instead of the MacBook camera that you're using right one. now. Yeah. Right. And then you would connect it up with Camo, right? Camo is an amazing mm-hmm. yep. app that lets camo. your camera. Oh, you got Camo. Honestly, yeah. I wouldn't mess with that right now. I'd, I'd get the process going and, you know, run with what you got. Take your mm-hmm. iPhone, pop it up with a tripod or, you know, stack it on some books, whatever, and then flip on Camo, right. make the adjustments on the on the screen so you look cuter, and then just let it out. Just let it out. And then if you need help with Camo, then you, you can hit up Eden because she knows the answer. So here's the equipment that I have right now. Um, I've got a Rodecaster, but it's the older version. Is there a reason I should buy the new Rodecaster? No, nah, not for this. No? no biggie. Okay. I have a Stream Deck XL. I, of course, I've got Ecamm. I'm in my second year. I've got uh, a Rode Pod mic. Is that sufficient? Perfect. And then I've got a, tele- I've got a teleprompter set up, too. Oh, then you're good. So, you know, especially for the way you, you, because you're used to being a public speaker, I would say just put your bullet points on your teleprompter, pop it right there on the screen. So you're looking Mm -hmm. down the pipe and then your pod mic is already going to sound good. The Rodecaster Pro is perfect for this. If you want to add sounds, bells, whistles, things like that, you can go ahead and put that in. And yeah, I would legit just throw my iPhone on a tripod and pop it on as the master camera and e-cam and then you can have the Canon in 52. So you can have sort of dual angles if you want. Right. And I think that's perfect for what you're going to do because one thing about the podcasting, especially sort of in, in YouTube space, majority of your audience is going to come from the audio version. So they're not going to see all of that stuff. Anyway. Right. Um, the right. pod mic is fantastic. It has good noise rejection. It will sound just absolutely great. What I like to do at the end is take my audio file and I run it through a program called Alphonic. That is a website, alphonic.com. But I also have the standalone version on my desktop. It's like 80 bucks for the standalone version. The website is free, but you do have time limits. Most people never run out of those time limits and the time accumulates, like it generates rollover minutes, kind of like the old cell phones, right? So you just basically... How do you spell that? A-U-P-H-O-N-I-C. Uh, Paul will drop okay. a link in the chat. For those who are listening and okay. want to go see it on YouTube, I'll put it in the show notes as well. Uh, yeah, Alphonic is really good because I just go in there and say, I want you to level my voice, right? And I want it to be negative 16 LUFS. It's a technical thing, but that's what most of your podcast aggregators want that volume to be at because we've all been there. Like you're in your car, you're just cruising down the road. CarPlay is playing your favorite podcast. And then it switch to another podcast. And they'd be like, I'm not trying to hear ASMR in the car. I'm trying to hear what you're talking about. <laughs> so, right. Right. And it irritates me because there's TV shows like full networks that have like mm-hmm. different interns for every show. And you could be watching their clips for today to try to catch up on what's going on. And they're all different levels because they're not leveling it. So that Alphonic at the end will do that last minute polish. It's just like hitting it with the pledge right before you go out or, you know, snapping a little Jakar behind the ears before you step. Like it's exactly that. So it makes it perfect. And to me, I like it because it will attach the image and things like that. So what I do is I have okay. my Captivate connected to Alphonic. So once it's finished, it uploads the flow that way. So in a couple of minutes, when everybody gets their episode, uh, that's how it's going to happen. It's it's really cool. And I have a couple of videos on Alphonic, but it's nothing to know. You really throw a file at it, name it what you want it to be, and just have it set for you know the right level, and it's done. Like, it's super, super simple. Okay, so now we did all of that. When we publish the promo episode or the trailer, this is when you connect it to all of the podcast directories. There are a couple that will say you can only put it there after you've had three episodes. You want to get that up there. And the reason for that is because it's going to need time to sort of spread around. And then so... 
that's why you want to publish that to the directories because the directories will get in and move it out with the trailer. So I hope that made sense in my head. It made sense. Okay. So now you're going to go ahead and publish your first episode. Now we get to the good part. All right. Here's what I suggest you do. And this is going to be cool. You have this great ability to have really short stories or, uh, parables that you use in order mm -hmm. to highlight some of the points we talk about in the business. If you are throwing those in your podcast, now with Ecamm, you can press M whenever you just said something dope. <laughs> so it leaves a marker in a text file. In your recording, you'll know where you said something that you want to clip out. We're going to take those clips and we're going to use YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels, TikTok reels or LinkedIn, probably for you, LinkedIn and, and YouTube would be your two best options. Mm -hmm. You're going to use those to help promote the show. Now, the, okay, everybody pay attention. Everybody lean up, pull over the car, tell the kid to be quiet for a second, whatever. Stop selling your stuff. <laughs> Just drop the info. Let the people find your personality. Let yeah. them love your personality. I know we can't help it. We've all been trained to be sales folks. Uh, we've a lot of mm -hmm. us have been through the the Dale Carnegie systems or the Jim Rome system, and the advice is still solid. But we can't sell like that anymore. We sell through right. giving now, right? right. So you're just going to come in and drop those gems, and. In the description, you're going to have the link to the podcast. In the podcast title description show notes, it has the links to get to the coaching program. Maybe at the very end, when you drop the sponsor read on the podcast, you can say this podcast is sponsored by Noble Bowman Coaching. And here's the links. And if you'd like to get an episode, yeah. But what you don't want to do is like every time you drop a reel, say to see the full podcast, go over to here. You just drop it and leave it hanging. Right. right? It's that old subtle come hither look that used to get mm -hmm. in school. You know, they don't say, mm -hmm. hey, come over here. You just had the little come hither look. And you might have to throw that look for two weeks, but eventually, why you keep looking at me like that? And I'll right. be like, well, right. because we need, to, we need to go to Tower Records, because that was the dating spot back in the yeah. day. <laughs> so, Kira, you know, like, what's a Tower Records? <laughs> little coaching here, little coaching here. I was um, talking to a client the other day um, about something similar to this, and the latest research says that the people have to have a, up to 12 touches with your content to want to go deeper. You know, it's funny you say that. That's part of my talk. When I was speak when I was speaking in the in the culture, <laughs> when I was speaking at all these conferences over the, the last you know summer months, part of my talk was it used to be you needed seven touches and now it's eleven to thirteen. Right. And so I used the picture of Eleven from Stranger Things, uh, Millie Ricky Bobby. I had her on my screen because I don't put words in my prezos. I just put pictures because I was explaining to people when I was going to marketing school or B school, we learned it as seven touches before a customer buys. But nowadays it's actually 11 to 13. So you're correct. I like how you just pick 12 right in the middle. <laughs> That's because you're in the center yeah. of the country. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I'm, so I'd listen, people, listen to Noble because he's telling you the truth. It is a temptation because we want to, okay, I hate posting social media, not me, but I hate posting social media. I hate uh, making these little clips. I hate editing. I hate blah, blah, blah. So why they have all of that, they already have a feeling about the content they're going to put out. And mm -hmm. I kind of want to tell you, if you feel that way, cool, your excuse is valid, but it will show in your content. Your content will right. show that you hate doing it. It will come out half but. Uh, Mm -hmm. and, yep. and so, like, if you don't have a love for it, then maybe get somebody that does. Because if you go into it with those, uh, I don't know what the proper terminology is, not premonitions, but, you know, that those feelings, those feelings come out. It's like with people that are mad about cooking, their food tastes nasty. But but Mima food tastes good because she loves cooking for you. You know what I mean? My yeah, my right, grandma would look right. at me at 250 and like, boy, you're getting skinny. What the hell is wrong with you, Grandma? 
<laughs> you know, right? So you want to go ahead and and if you can, when you put those out, you're going to share those tips. You're going to show your 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 nobleisms, right? Just people will start to vibe with you because of your personality, and you're already a public speaker, so you got half of this licked. You know, you got the biggest part of it licked already. And then now we're down to the last part. All right, here comes the last part. After you let these out, you want to remind people that leaving reviews is an important thing for podcasters. And I hate begging. (laughs) It it sucks. And I would like to never mention this again. But it's kind of important because a lot of people don't know for a podcaster, that is the best thing you can do for a podcast you love. Right now, you probably have podcasts you listen to and love and have never thought I need to go in and leave a review. But it's Mm -hmm. what the brands look at when they want to sponsor a podcast right? It's what the ranking sites look at when they want to rank a podcast. So you kind of want to make sure that if there's a podcast you love, something that you're feeling, don't just send them a a message on the social media and go, yo, that was fire. No, like literally go in and leave an iTunes. And I don't know why, but Apple is the holder of the reviews. As far as the marketing stuff goes, you want to leave of review. So you have to ask people or, you know, when you put them in your mailers and things like that, do that on your show notes, mm-hmm. remember to put, you know, some sort of call to action there. But the main thing is as right. you're sharing it, just don't be, you know, crazy about it. <laughs> I'm a, I have to ask, you know, I'm asking clients to leave me Google reviews and Facebook reviews for my business coaching. Um, so it's the same thing. I mean, it, yeah, it's never fun to be asking that, but at the end of the day, it makes a big difference. It does. And, and one last thing, uh, I would say it's funny because I'm testing something out on YouTube today for my live stream, which is directly after this in like 10 minutes. I'm launching a video first. I'm running a premiere and the subject matter today is idea generation. And so I'm going to run basically a nine minute video and that's a live Mm -hmm. premiere, in which case I'll be in the chat. And as soon as that's over, it kicks off the live stream. So Here's a cool way if you are supplementing your podcast with short videos or videos that will be about a subject, sort of like almost a trailer, and to give you a chance to do a pre-record before you go live, that's another fantastic way to bring some traction because that makes it a little bit more searchable and things. But the main point of this is you're going to want to using something like Apple Notes or Otter.ai or Asana, ClickUp, Drafts, Google Notes, whatever you're into. You're going to want to start building a list of topics in your head and get them on paper somewhere because nothing sucks more than to sit down and be like, you know what? I could bang out three episodes this day because the Chiefs lost and you don't have anything in your head. <laughs> you like I slipped that in? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. My Chiefs are looking mean right now. I'm sick of y'all. <laughs> I'm so sick hey, of so y'all. So I do have a question. I do have a question since uh, the Raiders lose every once in a while. So my question is, what what frequency do you recommend? In the beginning, month, what? it's just consistent, man. It's literally be consistent. If it's a monthly thing, hey, it's a monthly thing. But you got to let everybody know that. But the disadvantage of doing a monthly podcast is yo, you got to swing big poppies over Fenway every episode, right? Because you're making folks wait, right? If you are going to come out bi-weekly, yo, you're going to be looking at home runs and triples. Like they got to be super, super solid. If you go weekly, you have a chance to have a little bit of ebb and flow, but you need to be consistent. So I personally don't like seasons because I know I'm fitting to show up every week for my folks. But what you can do is drop 10 and then sit back, relax, you know, enjoy a little, you know, Kentucky and and see what's going on. Get some response, build up your momentum, rest your brains, rest, whatever. And then, you know, like three, four weeks after that rest, come back with another 10. And that's when people do seasons. Right. Tom does seasons. A lot of your favorite podcasts do seasons. I just like to be here every week because of the live show. Honestly, this podcast is about the products. Right. This podcast is about Ecamm. It's about Captivate. It's about Descript. It's about Camo. It's about Speedify. Right. It's about the partners that we love so much. But outside of Speedify, which is a paid sponsor, we don't actually say go download Ecamm. 
I'm just coming here telling you your dopeness of how to make a video podcast and enjoy your life. And then when you go to look for what to use, you're going to pick Ecamm. Unless you're a PC person, you'll find something else. So I don't look at the return on investment that like every episode needs to sell like eight copies of Ecamm. Right. And we sell mm-hmm. one every couple of months. Cool. But you will know who we are. Right? You're no longer going to be like, right, I didn't even know right. about Ecamm. So that's what we're just, again, making another touch point. We're doing one of our Stranger Things 11. One more question. Yes, sir. Length of podcast. As long as it needs to be and not a second longer. <laughs> I know everyone hates that answer. Everyone hates that answer. There will be, the cool thing about podcasts is we're not network TV, right? It doesn't have to be exactly an hour, right? It doesn't have to be exactly 15 minutes. If you come on today and your topic is about taking emotions out of business and why it's super important to take emotions out of business decision, and you can cover that in six minutes, that episode is six minutes. But if it takes you 28, in episodes 28. Like, don't don't worry about it. Like, this is not, um, don't say this is uh, the Noble Bowman 15-minute podcast because the minute is 18 minutes, somebody's going to punch you in the face. <laughs> so just as long as they need to be and not a second longer. If they're short, they're just short. And you don't have to apologize. You don't even have to say, hey, people, this week is going to be a short episode. Now, I have seen people say, hey, I'm going out of town. This is going to be a shorter episode, but I want to leave you with some homework. If you can bring this back for the next show, send me your results. I'm going to be going to Hawaii to visit my man's doc. So in the two weeks that I'm gone, here's what I want you to do. You know, so stuff like that. Okay, cool. Boom. I'm good, man. This is dope. I was kind of fun. I just did a live coaching session with my coach. That's weird. (laughs) (laughs) No, it was good, man. I tell you, you said this a while ago. Coaches need coaches. I have three coaches right now, and I'll add you as my fourth. You're my podcasting coach. There we go. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to do real quick, fam, is we're going to dive into the Q&A. And I just want to remind you, we record this every Tuesday at 12 p.m. noon Eastern. So if you want to check out the live show, check out the live show quite. Just come through and enjoy yourself. We're going to dive into the Q&A in just a second. But before we go that, I kind of mentioned it earlier. We have our sponsor, Speedify. We really, really love them for doing this. Uh, you know, make sure you're getting yourself Speedify as a gift for your friends and family who need a good, safe, easy to use VPN that basically anybody can use. Even your Uncle Paul, who doesn't know how to do anything on the computer, not a nerd guy. Uncle Paul could just turn on Speedify when he need it, turn it off when he don't. It's nothing to do. It's not complicated. It has so many benefits and features, and it's very inexpensive. You can buy Uncle Paul like a year of Speedify and be like, Merry Christmas, Uncle Paul, because I know you like to go to those certain sites that you probably shouldn't go to, but make sure you click the Speedify button before you go there so nobody compromises your credit card information or your retirement, you know? So it's a nice, easy way to keep the family safe, and we'd like to thank them for sponsoring this episode of The Flow. Go to speedify.com to find out a little bit more. That's it, people. That's it. Okay. One last thing, Mr. Noble. If someone needs to get a hold of you, how can they find you? Hey, you can find me at um, talk to the number two, talk to noble.com. There you go. That's it. Easy. Gang, I love you. Let's jump into some QA. We're going to be flowed out right now. Mm-hmm. 